I was just sharing a joke with uh, uh, Mohan Redigar. Uh, recently, you know, we went through a by-election in our state, in Munugodu. You know, talking about uh, cyber crime, talking about cyber security, etc. Cyber crime is not now confined to one sphere of life. Even in politics, it has come in. Voters are being lured by way of Google Pay and, you know, sending money directly into the accounts of voters as well is happening. So, I think new age, new age crimes need new age solutions. So, Election Commission of India may also need to be, you know, engaged and involved, not just police and not just law enforcement, uh, uh, but also I think uh, we need to start sensitizing Election Commission and others as well. But more importantly, I think, uh, you know, today, as, as uh, DG pointed out, as Cyberabad CP pointed out, Technology has become all permeating. It is, it is permeating into all spheres of life. There's not a single sphere of life which is exempt. So if you look around, I mean, we, li we live in a very, very interesting world. Our country is about 140 crore people. The number of devices, I think, outnumber us. Today, I think each of us sitting in this room possibly has more than one phone, I'm guessing. One for public usage, one for private usage, etc., etc. Now, and we also live in an interesting world because where the technology is evolving so much that your phone, you know, you can talk to your phone. There was a possibility, you know, at one point of time, say 10 years, 10 years ago, if somebody was talking to his phone, people would look at him like a pagal. They'd say, why is he talking to a device? But now you can talk to Siri, Siri talks back to you, Alexa talks to you, you talk back to Alexa, she tells you what the temperature is, she plays music for you. Even in the car, there is a lady guiding you where to go, how to go, you know, where the traffic is, know, where to avoid, etc., etc. So we live in a very interconnected world where devices talk to each other. Your refrigerator talks to your washing machine, which can communicate to your car, which incidentally also communicates to you. Human is just one part of the larger piece of puzzle. So what's happened as a result is in this world of interconnected devices, in this world of Internet of Things, cybersecurity is a huge, huge challenge. Cybercrime is huge. It's all pervasive. Like technology is all pervasive, cybercrime is also equally pervasive from IP theft, to identity theft, to embezzlement of money. Various hues, various shades of cybercrime is seen across the world. And in fact, if you ask me, the dens of cybercrime are not the big cities, the big metros. In fact, it is the smaller towns. I don't know how many of you have watched this series. I think it's on Netflix called Jamtara. Have you? In fact, I'll just uh, narrate a, a small uh, story. A friend of mine who had just watched Jamtara we were all sitting and chatting one day and he tells me, I'm embarrassed to share this story with you, but I'm going to say this anyway, is what he said. We were all very curious, intrigued. So we asked him what it was about. He said, I watched this whole series on Netflix the other day, just a couple of days ago. And then suddenly when I'm at my home, I receive a message from a cousin in the US saying I'm in urgent need of one lakh rupees from his phone number, from his cousin's phone number, which he had stored on his phone. So he wouldn't think otherwise, right? So he got a message saying, I'm in dire need of one lakh rupees. And this man, being a very nice, compassionate cousin, he said, okay, I'm going to send the one lakh. And immediately, without even thinking twice, he just simply sent the money across through Google Pay, UPI, whatever, whatever technology that there is. And next day, in the family group, his cousin sends a message saying, listen, my phone has been hacked. So if any of you got any messages, please ignore but damage is already done. And out of shame and out of guilt, out of whatever, you know, out of fear of being ridiculed, my friend did not share this with anybody but us. Of course, we ridiculed him later, that's a different story. <laughs> the point is, this whole sense of shame, ridicule, and also integrity in, ter in terms of, see, if you are an uh, enterprise, if you are an industry, if you are, uh, if you are an enterprise, obviously, if the word goes out that your systems are compromised, you're worried about the integrity of the data, the integrity of, you know, your processes, etc. So therefore, it becomes extremely important. And when DG was talking, when CP was talking, I was listening in very, very carefully. And of course, when Mohan Redigar was mentioning that awareness needs to be promoted. How many of you here in this room know that there is a common toll-free number to report cybercrime? Anybody? I mean, not the police officers, of course. Come on, man. <laughs> Anybody other than police officers who actually know that there is a countrywide toll-free number. Not a single one of us. Thank you, man. I think you're also a policeman without the uniform. Thank you. 1930. 
That's the toll-free number. Unfortunately, even I was not aware till I walked in here. 1930. In case there is a cyber crime, how we use, how effectively we use 100. I think 1930 needs to be populated. As Mohan Reddy Garu was saying, awareness, unfortunately, is lacking. Secondly, the problem, the conundrum, the dilemma from a government perspective. If we see increased reporting, if we see increased filing of FIRs, there is that lurking fear that the media will say the crime has increased in the city of Hyderabad, in the state of Telangana. But the fact is, if it is unreported, while the crime may have happened, if it is unreported, you are just living in denial. There is crime still happening. It's just that it is not reported. So the dilemma from a government perspective, from a lawmaker perspective is, do we then glorify the numbers? Do we then say that more reporting is happening? Is it a good thing, bad thing, etc.? But I think what's extremely important is that we build institutions that outlast individuals. See, all of us who are seated on this podium here or you know, those who are seated right in front of us, I think we are all ephemeral, we are all temporary. We are all going to give you know, a way to the future order. The fact is, unless we build institutions which will outlast us, see for instance, Cyberabad Security Council was conceptualized by Mahinder Edigaru when he was Cyberabad Commissioner. And today look at it, it's thriving, it's growing, and it is building COEs, it is adding new dimensions to governance. That's why we need to build institutions that outlast individuals. That's why we need governance models <laughs> where processes become more important than people. Processes have to be more important. When I say process, I don't mean just a piece, a, a, a data flow chart or a flow chart. What I mean is a simple intervention. You know, our Telangana police has done an extremely appreciable job when it comes to drunk, drunk driving. Today, there is not a single soul in Hyderabad, not a single soul in the city who is not scared, you know, about driving after they have taken a drink. Because this is the first time. Some police were stopped. We said, who is the police? We can't say it now. Some people can't say it now. The camera is put on. Who is the police? He also comes to TV. Simple intervention. Very simple intervention. But that has become a process which has basically taken the individual discretion out of the equation. Now, these are the sort of interventions, these are the sort of simple, simple you know, uh, inputs that make governance more and more credible. Those are the things. Body-worn cameras by police. What, how, what, how do they help? You know, people are, I mean, as a normal person, as a normal citizen, people are not very happy when police call them. You know, you police station and complain to the police station. I'm talking about the bad thing, no police officers. People are scared. There is also a stigma. 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 Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah? The point is, what happens is, the uniform, the power that comes with it, the responsibility that comes with it, sometimes some people take it to their head. As a result, I'm not talking about IPS officers alone, I'm talking about general uniform wearing services. What happens as a result is, citizen is looked at as a subject, an object, not as a human being who actually is in pain. As a result, a lot of times the human element, the human face of government is missing. But when you wear a body, you know, when, when there is a camera on your body, you're conscious that there is somebody in the control room who's watching me, how I behave with the citizen and how the citizen is engaging with me. Why are these things needed? Because these are needed. The checks and balances in the system are absolutely needed to make sure that we deliver better governance. So my compliments again to DG, to the entire police force, on affecting these very, very important, simple but important changes. More importantly, coming to the topic at hand, I think proactive policing, of course, and usage of technology, I think is uh, something that we cannot do without. I'm really, really happy because when I was in the US a few years ago, I had met Ajay Banga, the then CEO of MasterCard. Me and Jayesh, we all met him in New York. So Ajay told us, Ajay actually went to school in Hyderabad, Hyderabad Public School. So Ajay told us, on a good day, the MasterCard server gets hit at least 30,000 times by hackers. On a good day. On a bad day, it could be as much as half a million. So imagine the kind of threat we are living under right now. Each of our systems, each of our systems 
is supremely vulnerable. So what do we do? How do we do? Because as and more reliance on networks, as and more reliance on 5G services, 6G services, the proliferation of, with proliferation of technology, this is going to be a huge challenge. So therefore, I compliment the CP of Cyberabad on this wonderful initiative because I think it's important that he brought all the stakeholders together, industry, academia. I met with uh, the dean of Nalsar. I also met with, of course, triple IT and IIT deans. And I'm really impressed with what I saw here. Of course, the number of police men and women who have been trained as cyber warriors is limited. But I think what's more important is how quickly, as Mohan Redigaru said, we can do capacity building. And that can only happen with industry participating. If you join in this effort, I think we can augment our capacities, we can build our skills rather quickly. And I thank Mohan Redigaru for coming forward with contribution. And he said pro bono, he would do it. And I would urge, I would urge, I would urge all of the industry participants here and HICIA president to please take the lead to make this happen as well.